Um, we are back oh, from break, yeah. and we were just we were just hooting and hollering about um stuff, uh, folklore. We do um, a lot of hooting and hollering. We've been we really uh, yeah. <laughs> I was saying Walmart. I was saying Jake um posted something in the chat, and um apparently clicking on it does not disappoint. I haven't clicked on it yet, but. I do not encourage anyone to click on it, but the payoff is pretty yeah, good. There is a photo. There is a photo oh, of gosh. me. Oh, oh, ooh, tantalizing. <laughs> ooh. Um, Hannah, are you ready uh, to get asked some questions and provide answers to those questions? Yeah. Hell yeah. It's- All right, let's get into it then. Uh, yeah. First question I have for you right off the bat. Ooh, very formal. Yes. Uh, as a public folklorist, what is and how do you conduct a community survey? <laughs> Ooh, carefully. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but actually, so I have, um, let's see, I have worked on many a survey in some capacity, but I've never been the one to uh successfully successfully uh, begin one i did apply for a grant for one but fire city folk was too much of a baby organization and i don't blame the nea for not giving me money um, <laughs> <laughs> um but we'll give it another go um so how do you do a community survey um in deep partnership with the community itself is the short answer um the Let's see, like what level of like how do you do it should well, we go like, into maybe maybe first um is like what what's like, like what the goal is. like what is the goal of it and like yeah. what what do you do like what yes. why is it a survey and, yeah. and how do you do that as a folklorist Yes. So uh, at least one person listening has been included in a uh, survey of folk life dad gb davis so he has <laughs> so he has a particular perspective so he should chime in in the chat um, i don't tell him to talk very often but this is the one exception uh <laughs> jk dad uh <laughs> um but so the point of a community survey is to document all of the theoretically like all or like some portion of the community uh kind of like community-based cultural resources in a given like predetermined area so very often it's defined by like county lines or state lines or a chunk of counties um in dad's case it was the i-65 corridor i-69 65 i think it's 65 the road to chicago yeah um so that was like a, a particular like swath of land um we're from central indiana so we were right along the corridor um but it's this like predetermined thing um, so traditionally a folklorist, uh, you know, goes and does all the recordings. They, um, get to know the people in the community, talk to organizations, figure out what they want to have documented. They organize a bunch of interviews, do a bunch of interviews, <laughs> process the interviews so that you're kind of, um, systematically collecting this data that is otherwise not real like quantifiable, right? So you have, you might not necessarily have like word clouds, but after you do a survey, Someone, your folklorist, uh, and theoretically the staff of whatever organization, um, has a really specific understanding of like what's happening in a place uh, in terms of folk life. So um, there are many end goals of a survey, right? So it can be carried out in many different ways. You might be doing an exhibit. You might be doing public programs. You might just be doing a survey, um, which I think is many folklorists kind of dream to just do a survey for survey's sake, like just do folklore yeah. uh, like for fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I want to learn about a place. Mm-hmm. Um, but very often there's a specific deliverable that you're working towards. So that shapes your work too. Um, and it, it can look like lots of different things. But generally, the point is just to figure out what's going on. Generally. And I have, I have a follow-up to that, too, because there's, <laughs> like, the, because it's part of the community and sort of, like, a, in service of a public good, how do you yeah. make that kind of research accessible to the public or to the community that you work with once it's kind yeah. of, I, you know, work, I understand work is never truly done, but once the project is sort of phased right. out of, out of um, the collection yeah. phase, how do people get access to that? So again, this depends on like what organization you're working with or multiple organizations you're working with. Depends who your funder is. 
Um, but theoretically, you, sh you can share the fieldwork directly with the people you're including in your documentation. So like send them a flash drive, drive link, you know, email, whatever, with their relevant materials in it. Uh, and generally, you also try to, again, emphasis on try, you try to put it in a publicly accessible archive, or if not several archives. Um, and in previous positions, this has been really hard because there's no, there's often no like centralized place for this stuff to go. Um, people are doing field work um, in order to achieve the end goal, not to just do documentation and make it available to the community. Mm -hmm. um, so it's one of those things that folklorists really need to have like a, a deep think about. <laughs> there are lots of things we need to have a deep think about, uh, but we do have a habit of doing field work in order to fulfill um, a, a goal that we've imposed. Like we wanna do an exhibit on this kind of art or we want to do a public program because it looks good to our funding agency, not, um, you know, what I think is the ultimate goal to like, of reflecting the needs of the actual communities we're working with. Um, so <laughs> again, many answers here. Um, I have to say, I've got, I've gotten some flack in the past for not always sharing field work. Um, and that's totally fair. That's absolutely fair. But it should be said, especially to folklorists who are just starting out, that it's incredibly hard to do everything in a survey like you're supposed to do it. It's really, really fucking hard, especially if it's just you and you're detached from your organization. Lots of us are working states away, yeah. counties away, whatever, from our other people. Um, so if it's just you and you're doing all this work, it can be, it can actually genuinely be really hard to share it with the people you've actually um, documented. So, you know, do your best <laughs> for sure. Yeah. So, some organizations have no interest in actu actually sharing this field work, which is also disappointing. So um, but yeah, it's, I don't know. Everyone's different. Yeah. <laughs> but it's something I've had to think about a lot as I get my own organization up and running because, because I haven't been great about it in the past. But I don't know if most of us have been any good at it at all. I mean, some of us share some stuff right yeah i mean it's just it's actually much easier said than done i know it sounds really easy to just send a drive link to one more person but i don't think it actually is at all there's lots of stuff wrapped up in it so yeah i don't know one of those things <laughs> one of many things that, that was a lot of really great ideas for that and all right that yeah, was well and it depends <laughs> it just you're so right though that it really does depend like on so many other factors beyond yourself too, which I think yeah. is something people forget because they think that like the field worker is this like rogue individual on in pursuit of knowledge <laughs> or what, and that's just really not the case. It's like yeah, all of these like institutions. Yeah. yeah, it's like all these institutions <laughs> and community partners and, yeah. and people coming together to kind of co-create a project, ideally. Um, yeah. Which means that it doesn't always look the way you want it to, which is so, so fascinating. Yeah. I don't know if anything has ever looked how I wanted it to, <laughs> like ever, yeah. ever, at, yeah. with any level of control over the project. Yeah. Um, like there's just, there's too much to wrangle. It's like, you really just kind of have to give it a go and forgive yourself for whatever you're, you haven't been able to do and try, try again next time. I don't know. That's why I tell my students, you know, like we don't always get a release form signed and it sucks, but like, is it the end of the world? Probably not. You had a, mm generally you've had a, a an above board kind of conversation where there's a clear understanding yeah. about who you are and what you're doing you have yeah. verbal and consent so i don't know again depending on the it's angles of the project like you just kind of have to cut yourself some slack like you just yeah. hard yeah yeah, yeah. To being a folklorist isn't always easy <laughs> no it's not. this is the least of it like yeah. paperwork is the least of it but you know yeah <laughs> All right, I've there's got, a lot tied up in it. I've got an, uh, another question for you, and it's a it's mm -hmm. a it's a question about um, space and place. <laughs> why <laughs> why are there so many folklorists in New York? <laughs> or Ooh, more, I've been more for this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll go off. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I got up super super early this morning to drive my ass to Syracuse for the New York uh, Folk Life Roundtable. We have, uh, which is like a cool thing that most states don't have. I know Maryland has a network of folklorists. Mm -hmm. And of course, there are in many places, multiple folklorists working. But in New York, we have a whole network of people. It's amazing. Um, and I'm really lucky to be a part of it because we have like 30-ish people working as folklorists in some capacity in their like day-to-day -day jobs. Or, you know, just like on a contract basis. 
some substantial part of their life is spent as a, as a folklorist, which is really rare. We're a big state and these people are really spread out, but we have, we have people, which is so great. Um, you know, I'm thinking of <laughs> Indiana and, and Kentucky where there are a handful of people. Kentucky's a little different because you have the university program. Yeah. You know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But they're not a lot of people. Um, so there are so m- <laughs> the short answer for why there's so many of us and why we're in this network together is Robert Barron. <laughs> networker and extraordinaire <laughs> the one and only robert baron oh my god um, who so <laughs> maybe i hope he's in the chat maybe i don't um <laughs> we, we I mean, hope Ron... he's in the chat he's he's the one who hangs out uh, the latest with us <laughs> at Definitely. AMS at the american yeah. course study conference so. hey bobby what's up what's up <laughs> <laughs> no, I know where Robert Barron is, and it's not here. Um, he he's at the bar at the Marriott Syracuse. Oh my god! Um, <laughs> I'm sure he is. Um, oh my god. But he so he recently retired, and I think anyone working in public folklore has has read his work and has probably met him because he's he's he is quite the networker. He really likes his networking, and he's very good at talking to grad students. He loves talking to grad students. Um, but he, so he recently retired from the New York State Council on the Arts. And he, if he were in the chat, he would correct me promptly. But I think he got that job in 86. Maybe earlier, honestly. Um, but he started the New York Folk Life Program. And he continued to shepherd it through uh, the next 35 years. Um, he had that one job. Like, that was his job. He was a New York folklorist. Um and as is the case for many state folk life programs, I know it was shaky at first. There was weird funding. He wasn't exactly full time for a few years. Maybe he was, but he's like working in different capacity too. Mm-hmm. The, the normal kind of back and forth stuff. Um, but like he is single handedly <laughs> um, kind of fostered this network. And I, pr- I, I don't want to give him too much credit in the same way that I don't want to let my dad talk too much, you know? <laughs> but um, he really has done a lot of. Um, a lot of really good work in New York. And there's so many other fabulous people here, um, like Ellen McHale, who's the director of New York Folklore, um, who have, you know, kind of helped keep Robert afloat and help keep this network afloat. That's so cool. So it's been a really cool thing. But there is, yeah, I mean, Robert's the very specific reason we're all here. <laughs> um, but it's nice. New York's a nice place. Um, how does Flower City Folk... <laughs> fit into this network and what's going on with with uh your great project these days why thank you for asking daisy um (laughs) i don't know i know that so i you can't see my sign um because because of the way way my camera is i don't know if you saw earlier because i I already made it but it does say flower city folk is excellent I saw that it was up. I didn't get a chance to read it. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what it says this week. So that's really cute. Thanks. You're welcome. Um. <laughs> so wait, what? What was the question? The question what, is what, what? What is Flower City Folk, and what? What are you up to these days? Yeah. So Flower City Folk is another uh, product of Robert Barron's hard work. Um. So I was working at New York Folklore. It was a very traditional kind of. Uh, contract gig uh it went on a little too long um i decided i wanted to move to rochester and um someone on the board at new york folklore uh jim hall who has been involved with folklore for a really long time in alabama um and so when he moved up here he got involved yada 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 we've basically cooked up this plan with robert to get me situated at rit (laughs) and flower city folk is the outcome of that um there has not been a (laughs) Archie's losing it. I was going to say, is that Uh, a dog? I was about to ask if, like. He's extremely distracting. (laughs) He's he's fully, like, (laughs) paws up on the sofa. For a Um, second, I was like, please let that be the dog, because if I bring it up and it's Jake, I'm going to feel so bad. (laughs) What the hell are you doing, Jake? No, that is Archie being grumpy that Jake stopped touching him. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Anyway, yeah, it's very cute. Anyway. Um, there has not been a full-time folklorist working in Rochester in like 20 years. Um, so we were really excited to figure this Until. out, but it's been a like three, four year long process of getting some funding and getting me situated at RIT. Um, yes. so that is how Flower City Folk came to be. 
and I'm very happy about it. Uh, it's so exciting to like finally kind of exist. Um, it's been like, you know, it's been, we've been talking about it for years. We have a logo, <laughs> we have a Facebook page and an Instagram. We're working on a website, um, you know, but it's very early days. But we are um, an organization serving Monroe County and specifically the city of Rochester, which is really great because we need people here to figure out what's happening in Rochester. It's a really complicated place. I love it, but it's a complicated place. And we have lots of really interesting stuff happening here. So it's fun to be able to focus some time and energy after years of the, that weird kind of contract stuff in grad school yeah. in one place. Um, and really put a lot of time and energy into Rochester. Um, so that's what we're doing. We're involved in some really cool projects very early on. I've been talking about them all day. Um, <laughs> but like, we've got a lot on our plate. Um, and it's good. It's really exciting. Um, like I said, we are situated in the university, uh, but in the same way that TAI is or uh, Kentucky Folk Life is, you know, we're, we're in a department, um, but, you know, that's not really, that's not like we're, we don't have academic kind of end goals. We're, we're very, um, we do lots of place-based work. We are out in the city. Um, you know, I don't spend that much time in the office. I do teach, which is fun. But, um, you know, we, we're spending time like out at meetings and stuff. And it's great. We're like in Rochester doing stuff, which is novel to me and really exciting. That is so cool. That sounds like such a yeah. like uh, dream career move. <laughs> That's it awesome. is. Yeah. You're like, oh, it I'm, is. I'm not like trapped in the cycle of, of gig folklore work forever. And, and I yeah. feel like I'm doing something important and like fulfilling. That's so cool. It, it, it feels like that now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but That's awesome. like we all. We all know the nature of folklore work, mm-hmm. right? It's uh, it's sketchy. It's yeah, really sketchy. It can be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we put ourselves in sketchy situations because that's how you get any money at all. But it sucks. It absolutely mm-hmm. sucks. I was really lucky to get the gig at New York Folklore. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I it had good pay. It paid me. Yeah. You know, I got money to move to Ithaca. Um, I, I had to beg for it, but I did get benefits eventually. Um, you know, it was good compared to lots of contract stuff. It was really good, but it was still, it was soul sucking, you know, it was really, really hard work. Um, so, and you know, like we all know people who are working in multiple States at the same time who are driving their tiny, like shattered cars from place to place, trying to figure stuff out, praying they stay in one piece when they do field work. Um, you know, like I'm, I'm very, very lucky to not be in that situation anymore. Um, and it is really exciting, but I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> what oh my happens? gosh, the truth How do you comes out. <laughs> I know. But, so like, it's a really good, really yeah. exciting thing. And I'm so grateful because I've, I've had a very kind of, like, I've had a lucky career. Like, obviously I'm okay at my job, but I, I'm very lucky to have lots of people who really support me. <laughs> um, Seriously, and, and not like the, the community, the people who hype you up. Like that's, <laughs> that's it. That's what we all need. <laughs> I know. Like, it, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad to have had so much help over the years. Um, but like, I don't, I don't, how do you establish an organization? Like I still have that wonderful support. I have all the support in the world and I'm still just like, what the fuck? Like I have to pick a board. I have to write a mission statement. Like, <laughs> No one teaches you how to do that in grad school. Um, I'm, I was lucky to be able to like learn how to write a grant, you know, and to have had worked on many grants before working more independently. But like, wow, that I don't. Is this is a... relatable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. We we'll circle back to that. Um. But before yeah. before circling back there, um, we have a kind of maybe a more like in the field question for you that I think Ooh, would be really yes. fun. Um, yeah. There's, of course, a rich American tradition of protest. Um, we were wondering Ooh. if you could talk a little bit about how folklore or how about how protest is folklore or can be seen yes, as you guys, folklore. Yeah, you know me well. This is good. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <I'm- laughs> uh, thank, thank the sleuths, everybody, please. <laughs> <laughs> thank sleuths. Yeah. So, um, you know, I as if you were watching Daisy play um, Crazy Plates, you you heard some comments from me about the popo. Um, and yeah, I mean, personally, I'm really involved in protesting. Um, but it, the, the entire act of protesting is folk life, right? There's nothing, uh, kind of, um, institutional about it being institutional. Like, I, 
a protest could not feasibly be institutional. That completely defeats the purpose of a protest. You, you know, you're fighting against this higher power in a protest. So by nature, theoretically, <laughs> so by nature, <laughs> so by nature, it's all folk life, right? Um, of course, you've got chants, you've got um, all kinds of like um, uh, ornamentation, like body lore kind of stuff. You've got signs, you have um, organization. If you want to do like the occupational folklore of protests, there's all kinds of crazy like organization happening, um, all kinds of initiation. There are many, many levels of folk life in a protest. Even, you know, even if you don't give a shit about protesting personally, the it could be it's it, it's effectively a whole genre in itself. Right. If we, if you <laughs> taught a customs and ritual section, you could throw protest in there and it would be, you know, right there along with like religious ceremonies like, you know, it's absolutely folk life. Um, and it's really, it's, it's interesting personally, I've, I've talked about this with some of my students because the American studies class I teach is very, um, I don't want to say social justice oriented, but we spend a lot of time talking about, uh, racial inequality, um, kind of systemic problems locally, yada, yada, yada. Um, and folklore Hannah comes out really quick and quick. It's fun because, there's this part of me that does protest adamantly. I'm very protesty um, by nature. I have a big mouth <laughs> um, and I love making a t-shirt. But in Rochester, we have these huge problems with um, the, the police. We have uh, super corrupt local politics. We have many la layers of things to complain about. And I, you know, I'm as a city resident who is starting this organization and intends to be deeply invested in Rochester for a long time. I have many opinions. I have many, many opinions, and I don't hesitate to protest personally. Professionally, I'm also immensely interested in all of this, <laughs> but it's like a step too far to make like all of Flower City folks programming about protests, right? Like um, there's only, there's this weird situation where you have to like take a step back and be like, well, what's appropriate? Like, as like because the the organization is me right like i'm the only <laughs> i am flower city folk so as the the organizer in that sense you kind of have to take a step back and figure out like well what what do we want to do as an organization what do we want to support and to what extent um i cannot separate the fact that i'm very protesty and that rochester has e immense equality issues um from the fact that i'm a folklorist <laughs> it's impossible so um there's lots of work to be done. <laughs> what's what's like one, if I could be that narrow, um, yeah. <laughs> thing, like concern that you might have as a folklorist doing participant observation at a protest? <laughs> Ooh, uh, dying? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm white, so I'm not going to die, but I could lose an eye. <laughs> Uh, I, could, I could lose a leg, you know, um, uh, like, but like quite literally, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Like that's, that's it. It's, it's sketchy. Um, it's beyond sketchy. I never really, I don't know if you had told a 19 year old Hannah that Jake has sent a photo of <laughs> to the chat that she'd be getting pepper balled and tear gassed on a semi-regular basis. Like, I don't know. I don't know if she would have bought that, you know? Um, <laughs> But tear gas really adds an interesting element to, to participant observation and like oh. the traditional kind of field work thing. I it didn't see that whole, one coming. A whole sensory experience. It whole, really um, does. Yeah, now I'm thinking about um, what's it? Pink s sensory ethnography. Um, anyway. Oh God. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. I like, but yeah, dumb. You're, you're if I can hop merged. in with a comment from chat, uh, <laughs> KB Davis folk art says mom didn't like that answer. <laughs> I know she didn't. I'm sorry, Mom. I also know Mom's really proud of me because Mama taught me how to protest. She's 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 done her time. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, Mom. Yeah. Go ahead. I've got I've got uh, <laughs> one more question for you, and then I have a couple funsy questions. Okay, we'll go fast. I'm ready. Um. Okay. So the Ranger Lore website is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good um everybody Thank should you. everybody should look at it after the stream please do not leave this this show right now please look at it after, after. Um, but we will post it in the chat uh 
you're always on fire on Twitter also. Um, so the question <laughs> is, what digital media skills do you have? Did you self teach? And which ones did you feel like you had support for institutionally yeah. or like from programs? Like which ones yeah. did you teach yourself and which ones did you have like <laughs> extra support for? Yeah. Um, so when I was an undergrad, I, I was like, I was a declared folklore major from like day one, which is not what? me too. Uh, what? Wait, oh where'd you go? No. Wait. <laughs> Shit. What? Is this in Oregon? <laughs> no, I, you. Oh, well, that makes sense. The only I other thought I was the only one. Have. Well, I, I don't think you can anymore at university of Oregon since oh. Lisa left. I, yeah, you can minor, but I don't think you can major. Okay. Anyway. Oh, that's sad. I didn't but no, know. It's like. This is so cool. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, continue. I, I'm glad to know that you are one too. Um, cause I think it's so funny. It's like who, who, why, why would you do that? Um, <laughs> but, um, wh where was I going with this? Uh, oh, right. Yeah. So as a declared folklore major, um, I, I was like, I was obviously really into it. I was very happy to continue on that path, but like, I was also really dedicated to the field by the time I was like 22, which is crazy. Right. Um, in retrospect, I was like hardcore, like, this is what I want to do. Um, <laughs> so, this, this um, before, is, um, hashtag relatable as they say on Twitter. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Um, but I didn't know it at the time. Like I, I didn't know that there were other people like me, <laughs> um, because I was the only one at IU who was like this. Um, but the year before I graduated, I, I realized like, oh, that's not actually that employable. So I, um, <laughs> I decided to do an informatics minor. Um, and in some ways it really helped me because I could put on my CV that I had learned Python and that I could use um, Creative Suite. And half of that remains true. <laughs> um, but it, it didn't help me with my employability at all, I don't think. Um, I don't know if the hiring committee at New York Folklore even read my resume in retrospect. I have no idea. <laughs> like, I'm not kidding. Like, no one gave a shit that I learned Python. No one cared. It worked out that I got a job in Folklore, and that's just how it went. Uh, oh they weren't God. interested in the other stuff at all. Um, which is fine. <laughs> um, the social. So I did a lot of social media. Um, my first task at Traditional Arts Indiana was to revamp the social media and actually like set up a Facebook page because it was still like relatively new at the time. Um, get us on Twitter <laughs> um, and create like some kind of digital um, online um, identity. And um, John Kay was great about like just letting me have free reign and figure out what I wanted to do with that. And he's done that with lots of other students in other capacities. Um, it's, yeah, <laughs> Dom included for sure. Lots of people. Uh, he's really good at people just like let, letting people go and like do their thing. So he was one of those people who like really supported me along the way. Um, he just let me figure it out. And I did. I figured out social media for TAI. I don't think I even sucked at it. Um, we did some clever stuff. We did like holiday gift giving guides from traditional artists and stuff. It was fun. It was really fun. Um, that did, those skills did appeal to KFP. And I did go on to, like, I worked on the WordPress. And I did this Ranger Lore website. I continued to run the social media. Um, New York Folklore had me do some social media that backfired in the end. <laughs> um, uh, they weren't happy with uh, what I was posting, etc. cetera. Um, but like the social media stuff, I think I did just kind of figure out as a millennial on the internet um, who was probably online too much. Um, that's the kind of thing you can feel out. As a public folklorist, you learn how to get good at writing for the public um, and figuring out your audience. So that worked really nicely. I think I don't suck at social media <laughs> um, because I, I know I know what people will generally think is funny, I think, unless you read my Twitter, which in retrospect, I, I some of it's funny. Some of those is. replies. Mm, some of those replies. Humor. I know jokes. Um <laughs> I know the emojis. Um, but like the thing is at nonprofits or any small arts kind of organization or cultural organization, like just being able to like actually fluently use the internet is a really big asset. People like the directors don't have time to even worry about it. Um, my phone is just like, Ooh, Oh God. Sydney's watching. Hi, Sydney. <laughs> uh, Sydney says, I know jokes. Um, 
<laughs> so like just being yeah just being a millennial who was like extremely online uh, worked in my uh, worked to my advantage for sure um the website is an outlier the website is not uh, i don't do any web anything anymore like ever um and i'm really i'm amazed that i made that happen <laughs> Um, but that that was a product. Pretty, of, it looks pretty uh, good. You didn't. You thanks. did good. <laughs> thanks. That's awesome. It's it's really clunky, but it, that was the product of my informatics minor. Um, that was the one thing that, like, you know, I could actually figure out because of that. Um, I just I can't believe I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 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 pretty proud That's of me. Awesome. Yeah. Um, all right, I got a couple funzy questions for you. Okay, Are you ready? Mm. All right. Hit me. What's the best gravestone you've encountered? <laughs> and by best, um, maybe we mean most memorable. Ooh, that's so good. Um, most memorable. So, um, we recently did a trip with aforementioned Jake and Meg to um other Jake, as we call him. To um, we went to Salem. We went to New Hampshire. We did East Coast stuff. And we saw some really old cemeteries and just like the, the, the like critical mass of like colonial era gravestones was like, it blew my mind as a Midwesterner where the oldest thing is from like 1860. This shit blew my mind, <laughs> you know? Um, it was really, it was really cool. The one that comes to mind, the one stone, um, although we always go to graves or uh, cemeteries here too. Um, and like find lots of really quirky ones that we love. The one that comes to mind is the grave of the York witch in York, Maine. Um, which like Google it. The photos are great. Um, it's the only one in the cemetery that has a, I forget what they call it, but a, a piece of stone, like on the, on the ground, in addition to the headstone. Um, I don't know what that's, what is that called? That's called either. I forget. No, that's not like somebody in chat. Post it. Somebody, somebody who knows grapes. Sydney. <laughs> somebody. Hey. No. <laughs> Not the first time I've screamed for help from Sydney. Um. <laughs> um. So, but it's really cool because there's a picture of this woman who is believed to be a witch. She. she yeah. She, according to popular lore, she was. But she wasn't. She just died prematurely, and it was very sad. But the, the image of her on the stone's incredible because she has this extremely low cut dress, like right across her Ooh. nipples, right? Like you can Ooh. just tell, like it is right here. <laughs> like the person, and like the, the artist just like sculpted one or went two for little it. hairs, just like very subtle. <laughs> very wow. subtle, yeah. But she also has these two big buns, like massive, like, like space oh bun gosh. precursors, like wow. right here. And they look like skeins of yarn. They look exactly like yarn. That's cool. And I love it. Yeah, it's fun. Um, but, like, you can't beat a skull and crossbones. They're so it's good. True. Yeah, that is very <laughs> true. Skull and yeah. crossbones is always like, ah yeah. I know what this is. A grave. <laughs> you don't it's a have dead to question. Person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. That's I love cool. old gravestones. That's a great question. <laughs> um, thank the sleuths. Um, Good do, job. Do you have any tips for hiking across a state? Any state? Yeah. What's your what are your, what are your like top three tips for hiking across a state? Uh, I bet Jake has some tips too. Jake would tell you to spend fifty dollars on underwear. <laughs> I I I get it actually. As a as a uh, fellow backpacker and hiker, I yes, yeah. good underwear. I mean, quick I know. Tr- quick dry. I know. <laughs> He's right. That's the so thing that's good. really annoying. Yeah. He's right. Yeah. So, okay. So the context here is that Jake and I are walking. We're doing, we're doing the Finger Lakes Trail, which is 580 miles across uh, upstate New York. It starts in Allegheny State Park in the southwestern corner, and it goes to the Catskills. Um, and we're just doing bits and pieces. Like, we're not, like, hardcore, like, you know, like, actual doing the, doing the whole thing one month. We do not. Row. Yeah. Yeah. No. We have jobs, um, if yeah. that was not already clear. <laughs> like, like yeah. mad respect to those people. We are also not fit enough to do that. That's the real problem. <laughs> um, but we go and we do, like, chunks every weekend or, like, one weekend, right? Yeah. Sometimes it's every weekend. Um, so that's the context. It is exhausting. Um, COVID basically made me realize that I 
hated running and it was the worst thing ever. COVID also made it really uncomfortable because there are all those like infographics of people like spraying their germs. Yeah, it's weird. Um, yeah. Yeah. And in retrospect, that, that was stupid. But like, I don't know. It just wicked me out and I kept hurting myself. I was like, screw this. Yeah. So we had already, like, we were already like occasional hikers. Like, you know, we hike, you know, whatever. We like outside. Um, but we needed like an alternative activity and we needed a way to just get out of the apartment. So we decided to do this. Um, and parts of it have absolutely sucked. I cannot emphasize enough how much water you need. You need to take more water. It's the heaviest thing that you and have. It's the it worst. Sucks. Yeah. It sucks so hard. Yeah. <laughs> but you need all of the water. Yeah. You also need decent socks. And you need proper hiking boots. My dumbass was out there wearing this like really cute but dilapidated <laughs> vintage pair of Merrill Ontario's and I love them I love them they're so cute they've got teal and purple laces um but like they're 25 years old and like their modern kind. technology for shoes is very good <laughs> turns out it exists for a reason <laughs> um like you should just drop the money on a good pair of shoes like just, just put it on a credit card buy the good shoes buy the good underwear get the extra like camel back thing um yeah, unfortunately, it's like it's it's a cheaper endeavor than many, but it like I feel like to do it comfortably, yeah. to not put yourself through hell, you do have to spend a little bit of cash. Um, so yeah. like you know, hit, hit up that REI garage sale. Um, REI garage sales. <laughs> a little a little plug for REI. Yeah. Can you um, imagine life before REI? Can you, I can't. Can you imagine. What what, what was that people like? even do? <laughs> Just die. Apparently, I guess. I guess they just died. <laughs> I don't. I have to say too, like, I don't know, Julie. Like, if you're, um, I know lots of people who are kind of skeptical about hiking because I like I bring this up occasionally in conversation, like, oh, I can't do that. Like, we're going on a hike, whatever. And people are sometimes like, oh, I like I like hiking. I like going to state parks and stuff. But I don't know about doing the other stuff. I'm like, I mean, sure, yeah. Like, it is a, it's a it's a hurdle, right? <laughs> There's a big difference between walking at a state park and going on a, on a 26 mile hike in like the middle of nowhere. That mm -hmm. Totally get it. No shame. That's, that sucks. Like there's a big difference. Nobody should do it. But <laughs> like, if you're thinking about getting more serious about hiking, I cannot recommend it enough. It's been so nice. It's been so nice. You don't have internet. <laughs> you see cute animals. Yes. You like we have found the coolest mushrooms, flowers, weird ass plants. We've seen all kinds of interesting like industry and ag stuff that I didn't even know existed. You I don't know, like I'm I'm slightly intrigued by maple syrup. I've had to read some books and stuff. Oh, maple syrup is so <laughs> it cool. seemed like it is cool. But like seeing sugar houses yeah. and they're like the tap lines and stuff, like seeing that kind of infrastructure, like up close and personal on these like really like actually kind of remote trails where there are no other people. So you can actually just like walk up or to whatever you want to see. It's so cool. Like yeah. you just have all day to like explore some stuff, like just go have fun outside. And it's really nice. Oh. So if you're on the fence about like not state park hiking, like just go do a little bit, like just figure it out. Big agree. You're, Big agree. Like, you won't die. Like, it's actually fine. <laughs> you might be uncomfortable, but you won't die. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I got one more funsy question for you, and then we, um, yeah. you, you maybe thought that you were uh, no. out of a game, but we do have no. We do have another game. I know. Go. I know. Go. I know. I'm Go. here for the long haul. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> what? Can you tell us a story behind your username, Egg Girl? I can, and my parents will love this. Um, yeah, not the first time I've gotten this question, can you tell? <laughs> um, <laughs> so I am a girl on everything and have it's always been a girl. That's called branding. <laughs> like, take notes, please. Take notes. <laughs> <laughs> like, social media expert right here. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> um... <laughs> um so I like on every like social media thing I've signed up for, I've always been a girl literally like since my first account um, on like whatever it was, um, because as might be evidenced by my chicken profile picture, you might have seen <laughs> um, 
I'm very into chickens. I was once upon a time, at least. We showed chickens in 4-H. Jake's laughing at me. He's so pleased. I'm humiliating myself. Um, We showed chickens in 4-H. I was in 4-H for 10 years. I took it very seriously. Um, Dad's favorite story about me is that I beat the big cock. Um, This is something I shouted at a competition in Greenville, Ohio. I beat the big cock! Yeah. Um, Greenville, Ohio, baby. Um... (laughs) Um, but like I was like, we had to wear lab coats. We were very into showing oh chickens. Um, and so because we had lots of chickens, we had lots of eggs and we sold the eggs. And the um, son of some family friends, shout out to Jack Meyer, um, decided to call me egg girl at school, which went oh. over really well, as you can imagine. Oh my gosh. He I- was very cool. He was like a skater kid. I was very not cool. I was a year younger than him. Um, but it really... This makes it so thing. much better that it's like a reclamation story. It's, like, it's yeah. like you thought you could make fun of me. Guess what? Yeah. It's my like, brand. Wow. That is so powerful. 13-year-old <laughs> Hannah is really played that energy. well. Oh, my gosh. <gasps> wow. Like, I've had that username for damn near 20 years at this point. Like, what? Wow. Like, I've used it for everything. Um, yeah, <laughs> that was so really funny. smart of me. <laughs> That's awesome. It's something. Uh, I guess the only chat question we have is Joel Chapening asks, how does he protect his chickens from raccoons? Which is something he's brought up a lot in Whoa. chat. <laughs> how? How? Any, any ideas, Hannah? More chicken wire. I love that this More. is the only question in the chat. No one needs to know anything about me Not whatsoever. Else. Joel just, just really needs to know. <laughs> How to protect the chickens. It is important. I think it's more important than me. Let's be honest. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. That depends on your coop setup, Joel. Yeah, I don't know. Joel, what kind of coop you got? You got to <laughs> explain the details. You're going to have to talk about this with my dad. Come yeah. on, Jimmy right. Davis. Get gotta, in here. Um, he built our coop. We had a beautiful coop, uh, but we did have we did have some things get in occasionally. We had a pit bull famously attack at one point. Famous. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if anything's going to keep like a really hungry raccoon out. You know, Jake said, but... which I totally agree with, befriend mm-hmm. the raccoons, which are friendly creatures. They can be your allies. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. You ever see, you ever see a, a raccoon in a protest? He's 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 got a mask on. He yeah. does. He's a very responsible protester. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotta keep those drones at bay. Yeah. <laughs> Sticky fingers, though. <laughs> All right. Um, hey, if you heard a question that you liked, uh, thank our interview sleuthing team. I, I'm so sorry that I always forget to say it at the beginning, and I try to echo it throughout. <laughs> but um, we are a whole team of people here. It's not just it's not just me and Dom, even though you see us the most uh, on the screen. It's a whole team of people who help make the questions for every interview the wonderful and intrepid and amazing and fabulous interview sleuth. So if you heard a question you like, thank them. Um, while Dom uh, introduces our game and I set it up. Are you ready? Hannah. Hannah. Yes. This is really, this asked, really, this is really important. I, I asked this of, of, of everyone. Yeah. Have you ever made a tier list? Excuse me? Have you ever made a tier list? The answer has to be no, because I don't know what you're talking about. A tier, well, you watch the show, correct? I have, yeah. Okay, so um, we love uh, we love doing tier lists on this show because, uh, you know, they come from video games, but also yes. because they're a great way of ranking everyday life, especially yes. uh, as they've gotten popular. Yeah. And we are here with the Egg Girl. The and Egg Girl. We we have to do something in the history. Yeah, we have to make you a part of the history of tier lists on Twitch. Right, one of the first very popular tier lists uh, that was not about a video game, but was about everyday life that got popular with streamers doing it on Twitch. Yeah, the egg tier list. You are egg girl, (laughs) and I feel like it's time to bring it all home. And you got to (laughs) rank the different preparation methods of eggs. Okay, and you think you can do this? Maybe, maybe. All Maybe. right, um, I'm gonna take that. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take that as a, as a as a yes for now, at least. We'll see if you have to back out. But um, so we're gonna go through. We're gonna go through okay. uh, the eggs. Up. S. 
Oh. On, a scale from, uh, on a scale from S to D, S okay. is the highest. That's master class. D is barely passing. So, okay. Uh, we're They're very off. small. Um, well, I will uh, I'll, I'll yeah. tell you what's what as we go Okay, along. yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. The, the okay. first one up is omelet. This is so good. Mm, okay. Wait, so I only have five positions here. Yeah. And I uh, have. You can, yes. you, can uh, you can stack we, them. You could do them all S. You could do them all D. You could do whatever. You could change it in the middle. You can okay. make this your okay. list yours. Okay. All right. All right. Let's read through the egg options and then we'll. Okay. okay. You want to read through them all first? Or you want to go yeah. through them? You want to go through them all first? Yeah, because I can honestly barely see them. I will. I will go through all of them except the last one because that'll be a reward for getting yes. to the end of the list. Okay. Those are soft scrambled. I can see those. Those oh, are what? Yeah. Oh, like I soft, think like, you are. You are being predictive. You're uh, you're on. Yeah. You're onto something. So it's we've different. got. So we we've got omelet. Okay. Poached. Yeah. yeah. Benedict. Over okay. easy. Over medium. Yeah. Sunny side up. Sunny. Over hard. Mm hmm Soft boiled, hard boiled, mm -hmm. scrambled, and the and bonus. Special. And the bonus at the end. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go like fried hard first. Fried hard is at the at the top of S. It is at the yeah. Yes. Fried hard like this one? I yeah. know it's unbelievable. Yeah. I yeah. I I just had to make sure I heard that correctly. <laughs> fried <laughs> fried hard is the the S. Fried okay. hard. Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, because explain yourself, a girl. Okay. Because. <laughs> okay. So my mom makes the best fried egg. You got like, and I. It looks a lot better than that picture. I have to say, like okay. that. That's a soulless fried egg. You need you need bacon grease or butter, and you need pools of it, like pools in a in a well seasoned cast iron pan, like so much fat, and you need to be able to like spoon it over the top, like you need a proper like crispy outer layer. You can't like none of this white shit. Like you need crispy fried egg with lots of salt and pepper, and it's the best. It's the best. I, I Period. Think, I think fried hard is the best companion for breakfast meat. That is true too. Yeah, that's totally true. Yeah. Um. Okay. A is soft scrambled. We ha we technically haven't got to it. We technically I don't care. To it. Okay. It's, well, so that I is technically okay. Here we go, Hannah. Right, that is technically right. soft scrambled until okay, we Google fine. image searched it. And do you know what that actually is? I don't want to know. That's no, Gordon Ramsay's soft I, okay, scrambled. Okay, okay, okay. That's okay, the yeah. Gordon Ramsay sour cream, three different temperature and chives. It's, there's no. It's, does he really put sour cream in it? Yes, and he, he does. Puts, <laughs> and, yeah, and it's cream. it's very those special. Are, okay. Yeah, okay. Those it's are the, the special Gordon it's Ramsay the first episode of every season of of of. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's. Funny. Yes, they are they're soft scrambled, but they're so much soft more. scrambled. I mean, if I had no, I did. I did assume that they were like that style of soft scrambled. Um. If you had four, if you had held me at gunpoint and forced me to guess who soft scrambled they were, I would have guessed him. Like, fair enough. Yeah. But like, I'm just like again, I'm just after the butter. Like, <laughs> this is this is not, and this is no longer an egg tier list. It's a butter no. tier list. Oh, it's okay. a it's a butter how girl. how much butter, butter girl? Butter the girl with girl. the butter it's on a... her. <laughs> how much That's butter me. do you apply? <laughs> All right. Oh, God. Okay. Um, okay, and then next, not poach. I don't know who the hell I know <sighs> who. Jake. Um, is that well? Where do you want to put that? Do you want to put that somewhere? Oof. Oh no no! I I think she's she's going from oh, okay. S to D. Let, oh, let the god work. Okay. Yeah yeah. Let the, yeah, yeah. Right, right, let the right, goddess right. work. Don't, don't right. just thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so also like poached and like the eggs on a Benedict are the same thing, unless we're discussing the hollandaise sauce. I think we're talking about hollandaise. Is that what's happening? I think so. Okay, well, that's also disgusting. So, um, <laughs> I, you almost. can't see okay. my face, but chat can. <laughs> I'm in shock. Okay, I really wish I could actually see the chat, but I'm I'm focusing so hard. <laughs> that's very um, good. You're a very good guest. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As tier 
podcast. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, so we're going to go with soft boiled. Okay. Okay. And yeah. soft boiled is, is uh, lower down in A tier or is this the beginning of B? That's a great question, Dom. That is a great question. <laughs> it's not A tier. Okay. It's not. Top of I think B. that would be unfair. Yeah. Top of B. Yep. Right All there. Right. Yep. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, I said I think scrambled. Mm-hmm. Maybe other way around, though. I don't know. I don't know. What if I could t- you mean? You want to put, if put, I put it put... there? Yes. There we go. <laughs> Top of B? All right. Just yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Just plain and then, old scramble. Wait, Hannah, I thought of a, an incredibly Bloomington, Indiana anecdote. <laughs> a bunch of us, a bunch of us were going to Soban on 10th Street, and, and uh, John K was walking by us, and like, oh, where are you going? We said Soban, and he goes, Soban. oh, and he goes, I love, uh, I love Korean food, Koreans, and my grandmother, the two best jammy eggs in the world. <laughs> They, they, it's a, I love a jammy soft boiled egg. I love John F and K. That's the like John K thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Sobon is great. I love oh Sobon. Gosh. Sobon. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> they do a good egg. He's they right. Do a jammy egg. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's totally not wrong. Um, okay. <laughs> but I like I like I like the u- uniformity of going the like the. The Gordon Ramsay eggs, and then anyone else doing scrambled eggs is the the start of the tier below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that is what's happening, isn't it? Um, oh my god. Let's see. Okay, poached. We're gonna have to put it at the bottom. Po- Just po- straight to D. Straight to D. Oh yeah. Straight so we're gonna to do folks. poached and the Benedict situation right at the bottom. Whoa. Which... Now what's higher? Now what's higher? Benedict. Yeah. Like wow. Again, wow. Not water. Of, you're just not a fan water. of wow. circling God. hot water. I, I, I was going to say, like, a ra- ramen? I, like, you don't, oh, my gosh. This no, is that's a, a soft boiled. No, it's not poached. No, poached egg and ramen sure, is guess. amazing. I mean. I it's just. That. That's I don't. Shit. <laughs> that's yeah, like, that's fair. That's like shit. I, <laughs> Put it, I do not broth. want. <laughs> I don't want water with my eggs. What is that? Why? <laughs> no egg Jake water. Got them at... This is an anti no. egg water stream. No. <laughs> Jake got them at breakfast yesterday and he um they came in a little cup as they often do and he dumped them on his french toast and I just saw like the water go with it. It was just no. <laughs> no. Had that not happened, I might have changed my ranking, but that's that was repulsive. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I didn't like her. <laughs> that was so gross. <laughs> <laughs> no egg water. This is this is shaping up to be a very bottom heavy tier list, though. Yeah, I I know, I know, I know. Okay, that's cool. That's Hold. opinionated. <laughs> I I have opinions. Um, wait, what's the second one? This is the um. Over medium. Over me- this is over medium. This is sunny side. This is over easy, right? Over yeah. medium, over easy. I mean, sunny side in that order. Yeah. So both of the flipped are gonna go in C. Okay. All right. Over it, medium either. first. All right. Over medium that makes, first. That okay. makes sense. Yeah. This is the, the there's the, yeah. I was gonna say there's a pattern developing here. The, you see a pattern. The cool you see a pattern. The nest here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, sunny side is gonna go. Ooh, see, I do like them. Sli- Actually, we're gonna put Sunny Side at the top of C, Ooh. first in C. Uh, Ooh, oh, interesting. Because because when you don't flip it, you let it sit on that side longer, oh, right? And you crisp. get you get some of that nice crispiness. Crisp. Yeah, so it's a little bit better. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, you got two final egg dishes. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I love it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> hard boiled it's gonna go last in b okay. okay makes sense makes sense yep okay yep also tracks and then an omelet are we talking like classic like french omelet are we talking like diner omelet I think, I think we're doing classic egg and cheese omelet i think that's i think that's anything right classic classic oh 
egg and cheese Thanks omelet. Thanks, T-Papas. Thanks, T-Papas. Hmm. We are going to put it. Ooh, we're going to. We're actually going to put it after scrambled. The normal scrambled. Ooh, normal okay. scrambled. So you got to. Yeah. There's a big middle section. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a bell curve. Yeah. This seems it's fine. A, it's a bell curve, bit. yeah. Hmm. Wow. That was intense. What a list. <laughs> I think I know what I'm having for breakfast tomorrow. Jake, <laughs> screenshot it. Yeah, right everyone now, screenshot everybody. it. Clip it and yes. ship it, baby. Clip, clip it and I have it, to baby. show my class. This is... <laughs> you have to, and you have to say, this is this is, a, this is folklore, and this is a folklore. there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, best and I'm worst the, egg. I'm the teacher. Yeah, I should probably, like, ask the professor next door to come over and, like, talk about it with us. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> wow. What a tier list. Yeah. I'm really proud. This is what good. A from, like, most water to, or at least from water least to most water. <laughs> no, from most butter to least butter. <laughs> We, oh, have, that's we have an true. egg that's tier list true. here. <laughs> Anna, water. Thank you so much for, for making our very official um, egg tier list on our on our wonderful show. Uh, and that was thank amazing. You, thank you for being an awesome freaking guest. Um, this is so much <laughs> Thanks fun. Thanks for being awesome freaking hosts. Well, dang. You're, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> the chat is popping off. Um, hey, everybody, you know what to do. GG's for Hannah. Ladders for Hannah. This was, this was really fun. Um, I... Pretty much haven't stopped laughing the entire time. <laughs> same. Face Strong hurts. same. Um, <laughs> massage you, it. Everybody take a massage break. Take a moment to... Just, you know. If you didn't do it on break, here's your break now. <laughs>